Hi everyone, in this tutorial I wanted to have a look at creating some uh, effects for your buttons or button-like objects in Storyline 360 or the other versions of Storyline. So an ordinary button in Storyline is fairly plain, uh, it doesn't really do too much, but if we play around with the states of the buttons, we can create some different kind of effects and even you know, maybe replicate what you might see on websites and things like that. So we can do some things like when you hover over a button, it changes to the reverse colouring. Uh, when you click on it and becomes visited, we could add an icon. Uh, we can do the reverse of that, start off with no fill and then fill the button in when you hover and, and, and maybe have it stay like that when you uh, click on it and it becomes visited. You can even do some things with your buttons like adding another object to your button and that other object could have an animation on it. So in this case, when you hover over the button, the, the, uh, the rectangle wipes onto the slide. Um, we've also got uh, a shape here which we can make look like a button. So we can simply just put an underline under the, the text to underline when you hover. And again, using an object that zooms out or wipes or wheels around the object when it's selected or or hover. That's the thing with with these kind of effects. You could apply them to either the hover or the selected, uh, or the hover or the visited state, or maybe selected. Um, but they're all just uh, in the states area. And then this last one is has got it's a button with an icon on it that when you hover, you see the text appear. So we'll have a look at creating some of those effects right now. So I've got here on this particular slide, I've got. Uh, a couple of buttons and also a circle object and we'll look at, at creating some of those effects. So like I said, it's in the states area and I'll just undock my states tab where we can see the different states for buttons. So we can play around with with these particular states. So to create say that reversal effect, uh, I could double click on the hover state and then up in the button tool format tab, I could go in and I could maybe have the fill color be white and I could change the text color to be that same matching blue. So when you hover, uh, you see the, the, the sort of the reverse version. Um, if I go to the visited state, remember the visited state for a button or an object is as soon as it's clicked on, it's visited. So what we could also do here is in the format tool for button tabs is uh, buttons have a number of icons. Now you could add an icon from the content library if you're using 360, but if you've just got storylines 2 or 3, um, you can use some of these built-in icons. So the one I chose was, was the one with the tick on it, so that we could have a tick there. Now when you put an icon onto the button, you have these other options about how you want to align it. So I might actually put my tick to the right of the text. Um, and I might even have the icon ignore the text so it just will sit off to the side by itself. So that's one way of, of creating some button effects. I can say done editing state. So we now have uh, the hover state's a bit different, the visited's different when it's clicked on. Uh, another, the other uh, example I showed was with a, with a button. So again, we could play around with some of those states. And this time what I might do with the hover state is I'll, rather than have it go a little bit lighter, I'll keep the fill color the same. Um, but what I'm going to do here, I'm going to insert another object. Uh, I'll just do a shape and I'll draw it off the button to start with. Uh, something like just a line or something like that. It could be whatever you like. And I'll recolor it so that it stands out nice and brightly. And then what I want to happen is when you hover on the button, this will somehow animate onto the slide. So using animations within states can be a neat way of doing it. And you can either put the object in the state and turn, go to the animations tab. I sometimes find that doesn't work so well. So I can create my object on the slide and then cut it and paste it into you know the particular state. So I'll go with the wipe animation. I'll bring down the time a little bit so it's kind of quick and I'll wipe it from the left. And then what I can do is just maybe make it a touch thinner and I'll just place that rectangle that's got the animation on it underneath my button name and then say done. So if we have a quick look at those first couple of buttons we can see that when uh, we can see those effects taking shape so when I hover I've got the reverse when I click I have the icon appear so the two different states then this one's got the wipe animation so both of those are working for me quite nicely 
Um, so this other object here, this circle, it's not a button, so we have to create some states for that. So um, when we, if we choose edit states for this object and we can create a new state, uh, when you want to create these button type uh, states hovering and visited, always choose them from this drop down. Don't just type in the name because when you choose them from this drop down, they have the built in triggers that it will take effect when you hover or it will become visited. So if we start with the hover state and I'll add it, uh, what we could simply do there and what I did in my demo was I just put turned on the underline underneath the text so it'll underline when you hover. And if I create another state, this time I'll do visited and then add. What I did for that was I inserted a circle shape. And I can go to the format tab and just make sure that it is an actual circle. I uh, do say no fill in my circle and with my outline, maybe increase the weight a little bit. And then I just simply position my circle shape around my button or what's going to be operate like a button and then I can say done. So now what will happen when you hover you'll see the underline and when it's visited you'll see the bigger circle around it and again on that larger circle you could apply an animation to that to make that wheel on or wipe on or, or something. And then finally, this, this last one is a button. It's got nothing on it at the moment. I, I'll go back to the button tool format tab and I added my icon, which was the home icon. And I'll just go to the home tab and make it larger so you can see it, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is with my hover state, I will actually come back to the format tab and I'll remove the icon just from the hover state but I'll type the word home instead. And because the icon's gone, now remember with icons in buttons, they're, go they're governed by how big the text is as to how big you can make your icon. So I needed to make the icon quite big, but I can actually shrink the text down a bit like that and say done. And if we have a quick look, we can have a look at those two uh, effects. So on our button, we've got the underline when you hover, when you click, you see the, the big circle around the edge or, or another object appear. And then on our other button, when you hover, you see it change from an icon to text. So there's a few ideas for creating some effects for your buttons in, in Storyline. In the description of this tutorial, I'll, I'll also include a link to a challenge uh, that was done, um, an e-learning hero challenge, where people came up with all different creative ways of adding button effects. So if you click on that link, you'll go to the to the um, to the recap of that challenge and, and again it's, it's a great place to get some ideas. So that's uh, creating some effects for buttons in Storyline. That's all for this tutorial. I will catch you next time.